In the heart of the Indonesian archipelago, on the serene island of Sumbawa, the towering peak of Mount Tambora stood as a sentinel, its majestic height often obscured by a veil of clouds. Its lower slopes, rich and fertile, were home to the Tambora tribe, a community deeply rooted in tradition and harmony with nature. They cultivated their lands, fished in the sapphire waters, and reveled in the rhythm of life that had persisted for generations. In this video, we're going to cover the notorious 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora. Beneath this picture of tranquility, the earth whispered of a brewing tempest. The mountain, which had stood silent for centuries, was about to unveil a story of fire and fury. Deep within its bowels, the magma chamber told a tale of tension and turmoil. Over time, the magma had cooled to a near crystalline state, growing increasingly viscous and trapping gas bubbles that yearned to break free. This heightened viscosity was a consequence of the magma's temperature, cooler than what one might expect from such a behemoth. But periodic injections of fresh magma from the depths disturbed this almost solid state and kept it fluidic, ensuing the chamber remained active, teeming with energy and potential. As days turned into nights and seasons ebbed and flowed, the island's inhabitants remained blissfully unaware of the geological drama unfolding beneath their feet. But in 1815, nature's patience wore thin. The pressure within the magma chamber, a ticking time bomb of pent-up energy, reached its breaking point. The once majestic Mount Tambora roared to life in a cataclysmic display of power, casting aside its cloak of serenity. The eruption was nothing short of apocalyptic, a colossal plume of ash and smoke ascended into the heavens, blocking out the sun and casting a shadow of uncertainty over the world below. The violent release gave birth to pyroclastic flows, avalanches of scalding gas and rock that consumed everything in its path. The Tambora tribe, the guardians of the mountain, faced the full wrath of this eruption. Their villages, a tapestry of life and culture, were buried in moments, echoing the tragic fate of Pompeii centuries earlier. But Tambora's voice was not confined to Sumbawa. Its echoes reverberated across the globe. The eruption spewed an unimaginable volume of ash and tens of millions of tons of sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere. These particles, high in the stratosphere, formed a dark shroud that dimmed the sun's rays, giving birth to the infamous year without a summer in 1816. Across continents, crops withered and temperatures plunged. Economies faltered as grain prices skyrocketed and livestock perished. The world, bound together by this volcanic event, faced food riots, disease outbreaks, and a palpable sense of despair. Yet, even in the darkest hours, the indomitable spirit of humanity shone through. Faced with adversity, innovation blossomed. The scarcity of horse fodder birthed the dray scene, a precursor to the modern bicycle. Writers and artists, inspired by the gloomy skies and societal upheavals, birthed timeless masterpieces, with Mary Shelley's Frankenstein standing as a testament to the era's tumultuous emotions. In the aftermath of the eruption, the once verdant island of Sumbawa transformed into a desolate, ashen landscape. The sun's rays struggled to pierce the thick veil of ash, casting a muted, eerie glow over the ruins. The cries of the Tambora tribe, who had once sung songs of harvest and joy, were replaced by a haunting silence broken only by the occasional whisper of wind carrying tales of a bygone era. Yet, even as the world grappled with the magnitude of the disaster, nature began its slow process of healing and renewal. From the depths of destruction emerged tendrils of hope. The ash, rich in minerals, gradually enriched the soil, and the first signs of green began to pierce the grey blanket. Birds, which had fled the volcanic fury, began their return, their songs heralding a new beginning. The survivors of the Tambora tribe, those scarred by memories of that fateful day, were resilient. They regrouped, sharing stories of survival and loss, and began the arduous task of rebuilding their lives. New villages were established, further from the ominous shadow of Tambora. The tales of the eruption, passed down through oral traditions, served as both a memorial to those who perished and a cautionary tale for future generations. Elsewhere in the world, societies adapted and evolved. The global cooling catalyzed discussions about climate and weather patterns, sparking early interest in meteorology and earth sciences. The challenges of the year without a summer prompted communities to develop better agricultural practices and food storage solutions, laying the groundwork for advancements in agronomy. As decades turned into centuries, the story of Mount Tambora, while fading from immediate memory, found its place in the annals of history and science. Researchers and explorers drawn by the tales of the eruption began to study the mountain, unearthing clues about its past and the forces that had led to the cataclysmic event. 
The excavations around the region revealed remnants of the Tambora tribe civilization, preserved in volcanic ash, offering valuable insights into their way of life. The legacy of the Tambora eruption serves as a testament to the cyclical nature of life, of destruction and creation, of endings and new beginnings. It stands as a humbling reminder of nature's might and the intricate balance that exists between our planet and its inhabitants. And as the modern world faces its own set of challenges, the tales from Tambora echo a timeless message of resilience, adaptation, and the indomitable spirit of humanity in the face of overwhelming odds. Thanks for watching. In the annals of natural history, few events have imprinted themselves upon the collective memory of humanity as indelibly as the catastrophic eruption of Mount Tambora in 1815. This was not a tragedy confined to the realm of fiery mountaintops and ash-covered villages, but a profound disturbance that would ripple through the climatic systems of the world, bringing with it a year of darkness, a year without a summer. As the earth shook and the skies darkened, the magnitude of this volcanic fury was felt not just in the immediate devastation on the Indonesian island of Sumbawa, but also in the far-flung corners of the globe where the sun was obscured and the crops failed. The year 1816 entered history books with a notorious epithet, witnessing a climate anomaly that disrupted the rhythm of the seasons and brought humanity face to face with the fragility of its existence. This was a period marked by agricultural catastrophe, widespread famine, and the stirrings of scientific curiosity. An epoch where the capriciousness of nature's might was met with human despair and resilience in equal measure. From the ashen aftermath of one of the most potent volcanic eruptions recorded, a narrative unfolds. A narrative of a world plunged into a volcanic winter, of societies grappling with the precarity of food security, and of the remarkable human responses to environmental crises. This is a story of how a mountain's wrath reshaped the world, of the lives it touched, and the legacies it forged in its icy embrace. It is a tale woven through with the threads of tragedy and triumph, darkness and enlightenment, and above all, the enduring human spirit's capacity to adapt and to overcome. In this video, we'll continue on from yesterday's episode on the 1815 eruption of Mount Tambora, link in the description, and we'll look at the volcanic winter that resulted from it, which produced the 1816 year without a summer. In 1815, the world experienced a natural catastrophe of unprecedented scale when Mount Tambora in the Dutch East Indies erupted with an apocalyptic force. It was a cataclysm that would etch itself into the annals of history, not just for the immediate horror it unleashed, but for the prolonged darkness that followed. The eruption, which occurred on April 10, 1815, was the most powerful in recorded history. The mountain spewed forth an estimated 100 cubic kilometers of debris, ash, and sulfuric acid droplets into the atmosphere. The immediate vicinity was devastated. Pyroclastic flows engulfed the surrounding landscape and ash blanketed the land, destroying agricultural prospects. Around 10,000 local inhabitants were killed in the immediate aftermath of the eruption, and the island of Sumbawa bore the full brunt of the tragedy, with its communities decimated and its fields rendered barren. But the horror of the eruption was not confined to Sumbawa or even the Dutch East Indies. The true extent of Tambora's wrath would manifest in the following year, 1816 known as the year without a summer. The ash and sulfuric acid that had been injected into the stratosphere encircled the globe, forming an aerosol veil that dimmed the sun's warmth and altered weather patterns. In North America and Europe, the summer of 1816 was marked by cold temperatures and incessant rains, resulting in failed harvests and a subsistence crisis. Snow fell in June, and frost persisted through the summer months, an aberration that left crops withered and the ground barren. In New England, farmers faced the sight of milk freezing in their pails. The Canadian Maritimes experienced heavy frost and ice in the midst of what should have been warm seasons, leading to widespread crop failures. Across the Atlantic, the people of Europe suffered similar fates. Crop failures in Ireland, Wales and England led to what has been called the last great famine of the Western world. Grain prices soared as scarcity gripped the continent. Families found themselves tearing apart their own homes to scavenge for wood to keep warm through the unseasonably cold summer months. The poor, unable to afford the exorbitant prices of grain, resorted to eating nettles and roots to survive. The total number of lives lost as a consequence of the eruption and its aftermath is difficult to ascertain with precision, but it is clear that the indirect effects of the volcanic winter caused by Mount Tambora claimed tens of thousands of lives, if not more. 
The famine and disease that followed in its wake, the inevitable attendance to hunger and malnutrition, swept across the globe in a grim reaper's dance of death. Yet from this period of darkness there arose beacons of creativity and scientific inquiry. The dreary summer of 1816 confined a group of British writers in a villa by Lake Geneva, where Mary Shelley conceived her novel Frankenstein, a work that reflected the bleak and turbulent mood of the times. Likewise, the climatic anomalies piqued the interest of the scientific community and contributed to the nascent field of climate science. The volcanic winter of Mount Tambora serves as a stark reminder of the delicate balance of our climate system and the profound effects that natural events can have on human civilization. It underscores the vulnerability of our societies to the whims of the Earth's geophysical processes and stands as a testament to the resilience and adaptability of humanity in the face of seemingly insurmountable challenges. Thanks for watching.